Welcome to the channel where I'm going to actually give you my recommendations for new streaming content up front and then hope you stay tuned so I can go and actually give you my reasons why I gave those recommendations. Today we're going to go and actually do the recommendations for The Perfect Couple on Netflix. Now for target audience members, people that are into murder mysteries, mysteries in general, and a little bit of romantic aspects of things, I'm going to go and actually say you're going to want to binge this entire series. For casual viewers, that those previous targets aren't really your thing on there, I'm still going to go and actually suggest that you watch the first two episodes of this series. Now, stay tuned, and I'm going to go and actually tell you why I gave it those recommendations. Somebody died. And somebody's guilty. The Perfect Couple is a mystery crime drama that released in September of 2024. The limited series has six episodes that run about 55 minutes each on Netflix. Now, it's based on the novel of the same name authored by Ellen Hildebrand, and it stars Nicole Kidman as Greer Garrison Winberry, Lee Shriver as Tag Winberry, and Eve Hewson as Amelia Sachs. There's some other notables on there as well, like Michael Beach as Dan Carter or Dakota Fanning as Abby Winberry. The synopsis for the series goes like this. When one lavish wedding ends in disaster before it can even begin, with a body discovered in Nantucket Harbor just hours before the ceremony, everyone in the wedding party is suddenly a suspect. So there you go. Murder mystery off top, suspicious circumstances, and everybody's on the list. Now, just kind of going actually telling you my perspective on it before going actually, before I watched it, is that I love murder mysteries on there. They're my favorite type of genre. And I like trying to figure out the who done it, all that kind of stuff on there. I'm always looking for the red hearings to go ahead and actually see who the author or the screenwriter tries to throw out there to go ahead and actually throw us off the scent or what have you. And some people are masterful at it, some people are not. Now, when I go ahead and actually really think about in recent memory, what have been some good murder mysteries that I've really enjoyed? Things like uh, the Glass Onion, the Knives Out mystery that came about. And then also series like Clickbait or Murder at the End of the World or even Full Circle. Those are some good murder mysteries that really kind of go ahead and actually come to mind that really intrigue me overall. One of the things about a murder mystery is that really does the setting, actors, or anything else deter me from at least entertaining the series. So when I'm looking at a murder mystery, it's really about the genre itself. And I'm hoping that someone writes it well, it's acted well, the setting is good, things like that. But I'm saying all that to let you know I'm the I'm the target audience for this type of series, okay? And you should always know the perspective of your reviewer so that you can go and actually really make that evaluation on if you're a target audience member or not and kind of put that into your consciousness to know if it's right for you. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let's break it down. So after watching the first two episodes of this series, I'm gonna say that it's a bit like Glass Onion and a little bit of Full Circle on Max because of the way that you have the privileged crowd meeting up with like, just like regular folks, and then how the investigation is conducted by the local authorities, all that kind of stuff. So those are the two series that I think really step up for this. There's maybe a little bit, one of the actors, one of the investigators in this series kind of reminds me of an actress in the Deadlock series. So that's also comes to mind a little bit. So after going actually doing that, here are kind of my thoughts, preliminary thoughts uh, while I was watching the episodes. The There's a flashback perspective that really works in this series, meaning that you're in the investigation that's happening is real time, it's in the here and now, and then we're constantly flashing back to what actually happened days leading up to uh, the murder so that we could go and actually get a feel for the entire family and their perspective and things like that. And it works in another way because the investigation kind of becomes a little bit of a tension breaker because sometimes there's humor that breaks out in there. Sometimes it just uh, takes you off of some dramatic scenes and things like that. So the framing of the way that they did the investigation on this and then flashbacks or what have you was really well done in this series. Yes, I take pills from everyone. Is that a crime? Yes. Virtually everyone that's introduced in these episodes is a suspect. You can actually see, you can justify Virtually everybody is introduced here in some kind of way, shape, or form, which is great. Anytime that you can go and actually write everybody plausibly into a murder mystery makes it more and more intriguing. And it kind of makes you go and actually do some mental gymnastics in order to find that uh, whodunit type of thing on there. So very well written. 
And there's some very good cliffhangers at the end of each episode to really make you want to go ahead and actually continue to binge out. So right when you go and actually they're like, okay, it's kind of dying out a little bit. And then boom, they hit you with something and makes you want to watch the next episode. That is a very good way to go and actually continue to go and actually make people binge things on streaming platforms. This show did a very good job in doing that in those first two episodes. Within the various different characters and how they wrote them and things like that we really got a good idea of personalities um, situations and motivations for all the characters and i think the reason why i bring that up as far as like that really kind of called me out into the episodes is because sometimes you go and actually write these one-dimensional characters you make the characters that are kind of the, the uh, mustache twist uh twisting uh, bad guys or you make somebody too much of a, a do good or what have you and here we have complex characters that could go either way and so that makes it uh, more of an intriguing watch. So those are kind of my initial thoughts while watching these first two episodes. Um, and then let me just grade out a couple different things on there and then just kind of leave you with the aspects of why when I actually said we need to go and actually business out for target audience members and even watch it too for casual viewers. So first and foremost, with storytelling. Storytelling, I gave a B plus in here. Uh, we're going to actually tell the story starting off with the investigation. You go ahead and actually get it right into it. The framing of the flashbacks, uh, days before things happen, as I said before, was a really good framing device and it really kind of helps break up the tension and it helps out with the pacing and things like that. Uh, the series also does a good job of making you dislike most of the people and making them suspects. So not only do we know a lot about the personalities, but then there's this a little bit of things that you just kind of say, all these characters are gray. There's no black and white types of characters, which makes them that much more intriguing and makes them all suspects. And it also makes you kind of not want certain people doing out that, but you know what, you've done dirt. So um, very good job as far as how we did the storytelling on that. The reason why I wasn't quite an A is because we kind of get some overused tropes and cliche types of stories, uh, whether we're talking about romantic aspects of things, um, some of the lines that were spoken and things that we did to go and actually get people back or what have you. There were just some cliche things on there that just kind of speak to me like, oh, okay, not very creative or what have you. But still, B plus, nothing to sneeze at. Really liked it. And there were some, there were also some things on here that I think probably, I didn't read the book, but when you hear some of these lines, you can see some of the lines were intentionally put in there to kind of misdirect and really kind of either call you to this particular person to watch them or to clear the scent off them. It was like, it's a little too blatant for it. Like when I'm able to pick it out, it kind of feels like, you know, you're trying a little too hard, what have you. But overall, the storytelling is very solid. I'm going to give it a B plus. For acting, it's A minus for me. Uh, everybody in the Wilbury family plays their part to the hill. When you talk about Les Schreiber and Nicole Kidman, they're really good at being these powerful heads of this particular family and trying to just, they're the kind of people that you just, that we envision that have power and control and all that kind of stuff in there. They do a pretty good job on that. Uh, Eve Houston is good for the most part as Amelia. She's at the center of the whole situation as because she's an outsider to this wealthy family. There are times where that character can be annoying, but it's not like egregious or anything like that. It's not something that you're going to go ahead and actually be like, oh, I want to turn it off. It's just there's times where you like some scenes I could take or leave her. Billy Howell as her fiance, Benji Winberry, is probably the character I like the least. Just probably because he's so weak in front of his family on there that has some very strong characters even the characters that you know dislike or what have you and even the one that there's even a character that's probably weaker than him but you kind of understand it or whatever i just didn't like the benji character overall in there he probably brings that acting down a little bit but overall still the acting the casting for this was really good so i'm going to go and actually go a minus for the acting so rounding out everything on there for target audience members reason why you want to go and actually binge it out is they do a good job on acting the storytelling and pacing is great there is uh, good breadcrumbs leading you to various different suspects or what have you. Uh, the framing of it all is very good. I, once I gloss over a few of the tropes and some of those uh, blatant lines, what have you, this is one that you want to see through to the end. And I will tell you, if you do, because as of watching this, I've actually watched the entire series. After watching the entire series, you could go ahead and actually find out who it is. Or you could probably figure it out. It's not like an out of the blue type of thing on there, but it would be one of those things that you'd want to go and actually watch. and. See if you want to get your detective on. For casual viewers, I'm going to say watch the first two episodes because you're going to find that the story is easy to follow along with good characters that you may or may not like, but they're going to be compelling. Uh, whether it's the dramatic stories or the easygoing interviews uh, by the police or anything like that, you're going to be entertained enough to watch the first two episodes to see if you really want to see it through to the end. You're going to have enough there that you're really just going to be entertained about it. And if it's not your cup of tea, that's fine, but you won't have waste your time. But that's what I have for The Perfect Couple on Netflix. Check it out.
do have to get ahead of things. I'm gonna kill her. I did not see that coming. No, I didn't do that. Nope. You stay for the entire review. I appreciate you. Do me a favor. If you like anything that I did, go ahead and actually click like. Um, if you want to share with other people, feel free to share it. And absolutely subscribe to the channel as I continue to build up more and more reviews for you. Um, do me a favor. Check out one of these other videos or one of my reviews that you might like. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself. Now that's a happy ending. Or is it? Because everything's over now. And all that's left is you and the infinite void.